Digital Twiz is an active digital and virtual enriched 3D exact replica of a physical asset, including the data, functionality, and capabilities allowing to study, understand, analyze, predict the behavior of the asset, and optimize its performance. It's very powerful. Whenever we try, we really understand how we use it and why we use it. The asset becomes digitally alive, especially when its performance can be monitored through time. This can be done on a computer, on a smartphone, on a tablet, using virtual sensors and physical sensors. The physical can be Internet of Things. Virtual, we'll come back later to this one. It is being patented now. And the differentiating it from building information modeling, that is a passive, unfortunately, it is a passive way of representing the building facilities. Let's see that digital twins can be used in different environments. It can be used for health, nuclear, robotics, e-commerce. It can be used for marketing. It can be used also for construction. When we're dealing with construction, according to the National Institute of Standards and Technology, they are stating and claiming that the most of the expenses are focused on the construction maintenance and operation. We're not saying that the others we're not paying. We are all paying. But the most we're paying on the operation and maintenance, and we have to reduce that to optimize it. The way we do that, Digital Twins is one of the solutions that is the powerful one. To tackle the project with the client, we have to ask the right questions. And this is where it all begins. Starting with the data to understand what kind of data do you need and how do you get this data. So we have to ask them the five questions. What do we want to do? And this is what we can follow the pyramid. The first one is to when we meet with the client, we have to understand what are the key challenges and the pain points the client is, is following, is having what the client is trying to achieve, and why does he want to achieve, and when he achieves that, what are the capabilities he will get to want, and after the capabilities, what would be the benefits and the ideal solution that he's trying to reach. Then we need to understand what this the client technology is using. Digital twins will most probably, like 70% of the cases, will imply to use new kind of technologies that the client may not have been accommodated to be using. So it will entitle a cultural change, which is the hardest job of all. So the cultural change, we have to make the client be aware that, be careful, this will entitle you to do one, two, three, and you have to change the way you operate. This will save you time. If you don't do that, it, you will stay with the loss of money, loss of time, and don't bother going into digital twin. Then we have to identify the players. Who is the sponsor man? Who is the champion? Who is the guy that is going to fight us? Who is the geek that will like the technology? And this is where you have to stress your point out. So you have to understand, you have to talk, you have to listen to your customers so that you really understand how we can build this piece of puzzle that will eventually grow to be a billion, a billion dollar project at the end. Most of all, if we don't have the central thing, the client will not go ahead with the project, which is create the business value. With our culture, we tend to pay money to get something immediately now. Otherwise, we will not pay money. Digital Twins, most of the cases, you will get the money and benefits after one, two, or three years. Why? Because the more you collect data, the more benefits you will have, and the more decision, the better decision you can do. By having better decisions, then you can, reducing the time, having the impact, being more robust on your, on your, on your teams and your operation and maintenance. This is why the business value is very important. How much dollars will you be saving and how much time? Once you have collected all the information, you know the questions. These questions created data. This data created specification, functional, and technical. These specification created some sort of roadmap. This roadmap created also a budget and a time schedule. Now you are ready, and you know what technology you want to pursue. You are ready to go on and to develop your project. Now, for developing the project, it will depend what your client needs. If he wants the exact 3D replica, then in this case, you will start by having something based on creating a 3D model from CAD. Now, the CAD may not be the optimal solution because they're aged, they're not accurate, they're lost, and there's thousands. You will spend, your budget will explode. Then you have to find another solution. Maybe by having it hybrid solution, by using some of the CAD, some of the scans, but most probably, if you want an exact replica for something visible like this, not over the, at the ceiling, and low price, you will, have with the, you will go with the 3D scan. But with the 3D scan, you, there are many vendors on the market, Leica, Faro, Trimble, Topcon, many. So you have to choose the one that is adequate for you. And you have to choose depending on your length, scale, temperature. We in Dubai suffered a lot. We were, we were working outside in 60 degrees Celsius. The machine was stopping every 30 minutes. So you have to think of all these and then it will impact the uh, time schedule that you have. 
So by having the 3D model, which is a combination of different point clouds that are captured by the, by the solution, then you can go on with the BIM model. The second solution is to use photogrammetry. Or if we're using photogrammetry, you use your phone, you use your camera. For both, you can take pictures, you stitch them together using different kind of tools, and then you have a really nice meshed image colored, and then you can read the barcode even while you're sitting in, your, in, your, uh, in front of your screen at the office. By reading the barcode, which is the fingerprint of an asset that is linked to a database that you have injected, collected information from site. You can also use the ground penetrating radar, which is a technology that will allow you to send the waves underneath the earth, get reflected into the object, and then based on the signature of the reflection, you can produce the 3D image that you want for embedded system. So that all this can be linked, hybridized together so that you can get a 3D model, which will end up into a really nice 3D image. Now the bulk of all and the most strategic way of dealing with the digital twins is what I'm showing you now. This is a digital construction workflow that I've created and now it's going to be presented, uh, published soon in the Ministry of Infrastructure and Development Guideline 4.0 in the next summer to be deployed across the region and hopefully we will get of course comments and we will fine tune it depending on this. Now this organization structure will not think of a BIM anymore. It will be focusing on the digital because the BIM it will be a drop in the sea of the digitalization. So we are introducing a new layers of quality check. And this quality check, at least four or five, it will improve the quality of your project. At the same time, we are introducing roles like Scrum Master, like Agile Coach. We are introducing Data Analyst, Technology and Data Specialist, Digital Information Coordinator. All this in concentrating onto something, the data. Because this is very important, this is very critical and, and strategic for moving the project ahead. So this is what we're moving forward with it, and we have two roles. It's no longer something called project manager and then everyone underneath it. There, there are two simultaneous roles at the same level, which are called the project engineering manager and the project operation manager. More details will be found in the guidelines later on, and then you have the project director. You have now the organization chart, you have the technology, you have the implementation, all is set, the time schedule, the budget, you move on with the developing of the BIM, which is the passive. All right, and then the BIM, you will get the design, the demolishing, the refurbishment. It will help you a lot in many aspects, but this is not the point here of talking about what is BIM. But most, more interesting than that is that I want to give more soul to the BIM model, which is dead. So I want to give it a DNA that will help him move on automatically and autonomously. This is why I will link it with the Internet of Things technology, which is a physical implementation of the sensors that will be installed on assets, and most of them they have, but the problem is that many of the clients, they don't have the infrastructure ready, they don't have the budget, and they don't have the culture of understanding what is there. So it will take us ages to get in this in place. This is why we found out another solution that we are patenting it, it's called Coding of Things. It will use whatever you're using, the way you're, th you're working with your uh, uh, project, and then we manipulate that into getting it into something readable and then implementing it into the computerized maintenance management software. Can be Maximo, can be AssetWise, can be many, depending on what you're using. This will allow you to visualize the 3D model into a piece of software that will help you predict the behavior of the assets and to read in real time and maybe on a frequent time. Following this, you will be able to read the statistics the, uh, from the gorges, uh, the graphs, all what you interested to you depending on the data you need. Later on, you will be able to make the decision-making rules, the intervention matrix, and the resolutions, and everything is intellect connected. Now, this is not the only way of using digital twins. So many benefits can be extracted from digital twins. I will provide more accuracy, reduce some uh, bargaining time, uh, potential penalties, all this stuff. I, want, and I, I will not go in details, but what is important of all, I believe, truly believe, that digital twins are the next big thing in the fourth industrial revolution for the development of the new product and processes. I hope you enjoyed the session and to make Digital Twins more democratized and not to fear it. Thank you very much.